Welcome to the MetaWare Debugger Training. This is MDB Session 5, where we'll show how to use breakpoints and watchpoints. In this session, we'll show you how to use the breakpoint and watchpoint windows for advanced breakpoint control and for setting watchpoints. After launching a debug session, if you have the default window layout, the breakpoint and watchpoint windows are already open in a tabbed frame shared with the debug console. If you need to reopen these windows, you can find them in the display menu as follows. Let's start by discussing breakpoints. As shown in a previous session, you will usually just insert breakpoints into your code directly from the source and disassembly windows. However, you can use the breakpoint window to control some advanced breakpoint capabilities. Any breakpoints that you add directly into your code will be listed in the breakpoint window for tracking purposes. Note that by default, breakpoints are not preserved between debugger invocations and will need to be reinserted each time you start the debugger. If you wish to preserve them, you can turn on the debugger toggle Restore AP from the debugger command line or select the Restore Breakpoints from Last Run of Same Program checkbox in the Program Options pane of the Debugger Configuration GUI. You can delete a breakpoint by selecting it and pressing the Remove button. This has the same effect as if you had deleted it directly from the source or disassembly window. The adjacent All button will delete all of the breakpoints. You can also temporarily disable breakpoints. This means that a breakpoint will not halt the core, but the debugger remembers its location so that it can be easily re-enabled later with another press of the same button. Disabled breakpoints show as gray dots in the source window. The All button can be used to toggle all breakpoints instead of just the selected one. The Set button allows you to insert a breakpoint directly from this window. The main reason to use this is to get access to additional breakpoint properties. First, enter a location using one of the formats described in the window. For example, file name and line number. Then, optionally select the breakpoint type, either hardware or software. Now you can configure the following advanced properties, each of which can be used independently or together. The count field allows you to associate a count with the breakpoint. For example, if you enter 5 here, this means that the debugger will run past this breakpoint four times, but stop execution the fifth time it's hit. This could be used in a situation where you want to insert a breakpoint within a loop, but only halt execution after the loop has executed a certain number of times. The temporary checkbox means that the breakpoint will halt execution and then be deleted. This is equivalent to simply inserting a normal breakpoint and then deleting it manually after it's hit. The expression field is used to make a breakpoint conditional on a C expression being true. For example, if I check conditional and then enter i equals 5, then each time the debugger gets to the breakpoint location, it will evaluate the expression and only halt execution if the variable i is 5. If you are running an RTOS-based application and have enabled RTOS awareness in MDB during debugger startup, you will see an additional option in this dialog, which allows you to make a breakpoint thread specific. This means that if you insert a breakpoint into code, which is called by more than one thread, then execution will only halt if the selected thread is active. 
Without using the thread specific option, execution would stop regardless of which thread called it. Click OK to set the breakpoint. You can see that the extra properties that you set are shown in the breakpoint description. If you want to add special properties to an existing breakpoint that you set from the source or disassembly window, you can select it and press the Edit button. The same dialog reappears and you can change any of the settings that you want. For example, let's make this breakpoint conditional. You can see that the breakpoint has been updated showing the new condition. Let's now move on to watch points. Watch points are similar to breakpoints in that they halt execution, but they are used to monitor data values as opposed to program counter values. A common use case for watch points is for tracking the source of data corruption. For example, let's say that you notice a global variable in your application is getting corrupted and you want to track down which part of your code is doing this. You can set a watch point at the variable address. Now, when that address is written by the core, execution will halt and you can check the source or disassembly window to see the exact code which is causing the issue. Another use case for watch points is for tracking code memory corruption. For example, a null pointer dereference may corrupt code at or around address 0. You can set a watch point at the corrupted address so that execution stops when the overwrite occurs. In order to set a watch point, you must have action points available on your ARC target, which are an optional feature of the ARC hardware. You can check to see if action points are available by looking at the Display Hardware menu item. If present on your target, there will be a menu item that you can use to get more information about available action points. Note that hardware breakpoints also use action points, so the number of watch points you can set depends on the number of action points in your core and the number of hardware breakpoints currently set. Note also that the NSIM simulator can model action points, but they must be explicitly enabled using an NSIM property. Please see the NSIM user guide for more details. Setting watch points is usually done from the watch points window using the set button. You can either set the watch point to trigger on an expression, which represents a variable, or you can trigger on an absolute address. Note that the register kind of trigger requires that you animate the target instead of free running, so it's typically not used. Once you've entered the watch point address, choose the mode. For tracking data corruption, you usually choose write, since you want to know when someone has written to the address in question. But you can also trap on reads, or both reads and writes. Use the size parameter when you want to trap accesses which are less than 4 bytes, or when the target address is not 4 byte aligned, as you must respect the standard data access and alignment rules of the ARC when setting watch points. For example, if you want to trap at address 1001, then you should set the size to 1. Accesses to addresses like 1002, 1006, etc. should use a size of 2. Any 4-byte aligned addresses can use a size of 4. If you supply an incorrect address, the debugger will show an error message. As with breakpoints, you can make the watch points conditional on any C expression. Click OK to set the watch points. You can see that the same remove and enable and disable buttons that are in the breakpoint window are also present here 
and they function in exactly the same manner. You can also edit the watch point settings as needed. Note that you can also set a watch point on a variable by going to the Locals or Globals window, right-clicking, and choosing Watch. You can see that now we've now set a watch point on the variable size. Let's run the code, and you can see now that we've hit on the watch point that we just set and size went from 0 to 8, which we can see happened immediately before where our program counter is. So whenever a watch point is hit, execution will stop and you can check the watch point window to see which one was triggered. The debugger techniques discussed in this presentation are covered in detail in the DesignWare Metaware Debugger User's Guide for ARC, supplied with the Metaware toolset. In particular, please see Section 3.4, Working with Action Point Hardware, Section 3.5, Debugging with Breakpoints, and Section 3.6, Debugging with Watch Points.